So here we've got my TRX4 and we're going to climb it and get it cross axled across these two obstacles here which is pretty representative of a four wheel drive situation. I'm going to take the body off so that you can more easily see what's going on and let's get into it. So we can see here we've got the classic open differential situation. This wheel has less weight on it and therefore is easier to turn. So that's what the differential turns. We're getting equal torque left and right wheels. That wheel can't, sorry, this wheel can't take much torque. So that's how much torque that wheel's getting. Not enough to turn the vehicle and keep moving. Same thing on the front axle. Now we can of course solve that by engaging the cross axle differential locks front and rear like that. But let's assume that we didn't have the cross axle differential locks. And what we're going to do then is track build with a rock or in this case, a piece of wood. So here's the question. If you had one item to track build, which is this, would you put it in position A, position B, position C or position D? So post your answer in the comments with an explanation and I will post a video showing the effect of all those four positions in a few days. This is what it looks like if we engage the uh, cross axle differential locks. So I'm just going to engage them now. There we go. See the car can just go up pretty easily without a problem. Now if we were to engage only the rear locker this is what happens. You can see that the back end gets skewed round there and I'll just do that again. So you can see that we're getting traction at the back but because this wheel isn't doing anything for us the vehicle will tend to pivot around on it a little bit like as you can see there. So what happens if we turn the car around and we go backwards so in effect we have a front locker now. Well let's have a look at the effect of that. And you can see that we get, we run into the same problem but the car doesn't pivot around as much and just a little bit more momentum and then we're over. So that's where a front locker can actually help you over a rear locker. Let's just spin the car around again. And we can get over that, we just need just a little bit more momentum. Probably even a bit more than that. There we go. So we, we, man we managed it with the rear locker, whereas if we were to go up with, in effect, a front locker, see it's much easier. now. I want to be real clear, I'm not suggesting you reverse ob obstacles, that is absolutely not what I'm saying because um, you, the front end of the car is a lot weaker than the back end of, a, of the car uh, for all sorts of reasons. All I'm doing is demonstrating that sometimes a front locker can be better for you if it's only got a front locker than a rear locker in that situation but there's other situations when the rear locker would be better. Now here's another question for you, this is a rear wheel drive car as you can see, it's also got an open diff as you can see there. Now if I was to very gently place it like so, you can see that the open diff is doing what the open diff does and the car's going nowhere. So why then when I increase the revs does it move up the ramp like so? Why does that happen? Answers in the comments, please.